There's a saying, a famous quote often attributed to Mark Twain, that history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Now, Mark Twain, as he was known, was born in 1835, and he and his generation lived through one of the most dynamic periods in history. Technological advances created whole new industries and a whole new era in productivity. The dawn of instant global communication and globalization, changes that captured the creativity, ambition, and of course, greed of people around the world. Previously, unimaginable wealth was created and the power that came with it brought a new breed of elites who replaced the old guard. And that ever-increasing wealth was concentrated among an ever-decreasing percentage of people. The miraculous technological and economic advances had huge environmental and social costs. Sounds familiar, right? Mark Twain died in 1910 and within years there was a global pandemic, a series of the worst ever economic meltdowns in the new globalised world, which created a wave of populism politics in the West that led to the greatest war the world had ever seen. Royalty and regimes were toppled and the world map was redrawn. So let's hope he was wrong. What has Mark Twain's got to do with London? Well, I've made many videos here in the city. It's an ancient city, a historic city, and I've often talked about the history of the areas I've been in at the time. And one thing I've repeated or regurgitated from history books time and time again is that this area, be it Covent Garden, Seven Dials, Notting Hill, or especially the St Giles corner of Soho, that this area was developed for the rich and became a playground for the wealthy. But then the rich and the wealthy left and it became a run-down slum. In the case of St Giles, the archetypal Dickensian slum. It's the one he wrote about. Now, I've said it over and over, but I never imagined, surrounded by luxury boutique stores and unaffordable homes, it would ever happen again. I couldn't at the time have imagined a catalyst for it ever happening again. It's different this time, right? But it's happening. It's happening in cities all around the world. Okay, good morning. Saturday morning. Welcome back to London. I need some coffee. It's been yesterday evening in the pub. Oh, it's good. I think I need a lot more of this. So, I spent last night in the pub while we still can apparently because today the rules change. We've been in we've been in lockdown for months and the rules have constantly changed and they're constantly subject to change. Some of my friends haven't got a clue what's going on. Others are living for it. They wake up and check an app on their phone to make sure they're still alive, another one to make sure they're safe, and they spend all day watching the news to be updated on the latest statistics. But even for them, when you get to the pub, everywhere's interpreted the rules slightly differently. There are different ways to sign in, register, different ways to order drinks, and um, going to the toilet. Well, that is gonna be a job for all the furloughed flight attendants, the cabin crew that are gonna get fired, that used to do the exits and exits on the left and right and the mask thing. They can run you through the toilet protocol. Masks on, enter on the left, exit on the right, sanitize, don't touch anything, including yourselves. They don't even need to retrain, they can just change the job title from flight attendant to toilet attendant, and then we'll all be safe. Right, today, we can still shop for food and eat it. So today, I'm planning to go to Borough Market. Tomorrow evening, I wanna cook um, a Sunday roast. There's nothing quite like a, a warming Sunday roast on a uh, cold winter's day. Well, it's not really a roast. A Sunday stew, I'm gonna cook lamb shanks. So I need to head to the market and pick up the ingredients for that. Maybe take a look around, get some lunch. I'm not sure what to expect at the market right now, to be honest, I haven't been for some time. But right, first of all, we need something special for breakfast to um, soak up last night's fun and lots more coffee. So this morning for breakfast, I'm making egg in a basket, a zhuzhed up version of egg in a basket, which fundamentally is a very simple dish. A slice of bread with a hole cut in it and an egg fried in the hole. But for such a simple dish, we've come up with a very long list of complicated names, which seems to vary from country to country. But whatever you call it, a way to make it better is to use brioche instead of bread, a duck egg, and to make it even more fabulous, I'm grating Gruyere cheese on top. Okay, breakfast is served. It smells amazing. 
Okay, there's always a little bit of guesswork involved in this, but it turned out perfectly. The Gruyere cheese is melted, the egg whites firm, and the yolks perfectly runny. Good job. Phenomenal mix of the sweet brioche, the savoury of the um, Gruyere cheese, and the richness of the duck egg. Right, I'm going to enjoy this, polish off the coffee, and then we can head to Borough Market. Okay, welcome to London Bridge. Welcome to London Bridge. The market is just across the road from London Bridge Station up here. So let's head to the market. I need to pick up the ingredients for dinner. And in recent months, I've only been here in the evenings to meet friends for drinks when that was possible. So it will be interesting with the pace of change here in London this year. It's interesting to see how the market's changed. So we'll have a little look around. Let's head to the market. Okay, welcome to Borough Market. It's definitely quieter. There's far less people around. But you could say that about every area of London over the last few months. But the market is open. Obviously it's changed a little bit, there's less people here, there's less visitors, although there does seem to be almost as many market stalls and as much choice. And there's less people here so you can walk around quite freely, there's lots of space, but the hustle and bustle and all the people create an atmosphere normally. Normally the pubs, like this one behind me, would be full by now with people enjoying their weekend. And they're not. But as we're still allowed to eat right now, it's still a cool place to visit. It's one of the few things we can do. Shop for food and eat it. That is the queue for coffee. It's even longer. Thank you. 
Okay. The gentleman barista here. The gentleman barista here, just down the road from Com from Monmouth. The queue, as you can see, is a lot shorter because the shop's a little bit further out of the way. But the coffee, in my opinion, is as good. from the gentleman baristas. Yeah. It's great coffee. If you haven't been to Monmouth, definitely try the coffee there. It's phenomenal. The queue's massive. Like me. Why not try the gentleman baristas? Right, let's have a look around. Sandwich looks like a burger. Duck with salad, Comte cheese, and British bun. Let's find somewhere to sit and enjoy this. Okay, because of social distancing, there's not really anywhere left to sit at the market. So I thought I'd come and sit next to the river. Enjoy my duck burger. The only thing we've been next to the river in winter, it's pretty windy. It looks Maybe I should learn to take smaller mouthfuls. The duck is delicious. And then you've got the sweetness of the, the onion chutney. And then the comte cheese just finishes it off. Delicious, definitely recommend that. I've had them many times before, they're still fantastic. Right, I'm gonna enjoy this. Watch the boats go by, people go by, and then we'll get back to the market. So we need to get some ingredients for dinner.
Okay, successful trip to London's Borough Market. I've got all the ingredients, virtually all the ingredients I need for dinner. Great coffee while I was there and duck confit was delicious. Most places I've been to in recent weeks, London's been in lockdown for months now. So a lot of places are shells, depressing shells of their former selves. So I didn't really know what to expect from the market because in recent months I've only been there in the evening to meet friends for food and drinks. I was actually pleasantly surprised. In a way, in many ways it's better. Oh, it's, it's, it's like going back in time. It's kind of the way it was, not, maybe not 20 years ago, but certainly 10 years ago. Whereas, I suppose because there's less tourists in town and travelers, there's more produce stalls than street food stalls again. Whereas in recent years, it's kind of become dominated by street food stalls. I mean, the fishmongers was basically, all they were selling was fresh seafood for Asian tourists to eat at the market, whereas they've had to become a fishmongers again because they're just not here. That's just one example. But yeah, this, the, the best street food stalls are still there. They've still got long lines. The lines are even longer now because everyone's meters apart. But, I mean, it's not surprising that it's doing well because one of the few things we've still been able to do and are still able to do is shop for food and eat. So it's, it's far more interesting than going to the supermarket and um, it's outdoors. So it's a win-win. Right, I'm going to head home. See you guys when it's uh, dinner time. So it's Sunday evening and time to start cooking dinner. I'm going to be cooking lamb shanks and mashed potatoes, maybe some peas too for a bit of colour. I'm using a recipe from this book here, Snowflakes and Schnapps, which in a nutshell is cooking food and drink for warm weather. I'm going to be using a recipe for the lamb shanks from this section here, warm to the core, which says whether cocooned in wool and about to brave the elements or hibernating in an oversized armchair hiding from the freeze, you will take comfort from these breakfasts and enjoy the sustenance of these simmering, slow cooked recipes, partake in a nourishing meal designed to soften the blow of the chilly spell and fuel yourself for the hours ahead. Well, I did brave Borough Market, had a successful trip to Borough Market yesterday, got the lamb shanks and a few of the other ingredients, I got the rest from the supermarket on the way back. And um, I'm making some changes to the recipe, but I'll tell you more about that while we cook dinner. First of all, in light of everything that's going on in the world right now, I need to sanitise the chef with alcohol. So this evening I'll be using Timothy Taylor's Landlord. So let's pour a glass and get cooking. Okay, let's try the beer. So the directions for making this in the book are heat butter and oil in a large flame proof casserole dish over a high heat. Season the lamb shanks and cook in batches until brown all over. Remove the shanks to a plate. Reduce the heat to a medium and add onion to the dish and cook for 10 minutes or until lightly golden. Add garlic anchovies and peppercorns and cook for one minute. Carefully stir in brandy and vinegar. I'm not using brandy and vinegar, I'm going to use red wine. Scraping up any cooked on bits, add the stock. Molasses, I'm not using molasses, I'm using black treacle. Similar, but not quite the same. Allspice, a bay leaf, I'm not adding a bay leaf. And 375 mils of water stirring to combine. Return the lamb shanks to the dish, making sure the meaty part is submerged in the liquid. Bring to the boil, then reduce 
the heat and simmer for two hours or until the meat is very tender but not falling off the bone. Meanwhile, make your mash. So I am freestyling a little bit on the directions and my choice of booze is gonna be red wine. So I've browned the lamb shanks in some oil and butter, then put them to one side in the same pan, fry some onions, chopped garlic, chopped anchovies and black peppercorns, topped up with red wine. Now I'm adding some black treacle. I'm gonna add the stock, allspice, salt, pepper, and then I can put the lamb shanks back in. Okay, I've actually topped up the sauce with a little extra good ordinary claret. There's now about a third of a bottle in there. Let's see how we're doing. It's cooking away nicely. I think I can reduce that to a simmer now. I've added the extra wine, one, so the meaty parts are completely submerged. And secondly, the more good ordinary claret that's in the sauce, the less goes into us, as it's a school night. Okay, our lamb is now cooking away nicely, so I need to make some mashed potatoes to go with it. Now normally, I don't put a lot of thought into mashing potatoes. Boil some water, chop up the potatoes, throw them in, skin on, skin off. Maybe add something to make them more creamy, butter, milk, cream. Juice them up with some spring onions. But today I thought I'd um, check out how to make the best mashed potatoes on the internet. So I found out that according to Marco Pierre White, Michelin starred chef Marco Pierre White and world renowned stock pot salesman, the best way is to bake them, not boil them. So. Then I went down the rabbit hole of the best baked potato recipes. Apparently you need to brine them, then bake them on a tray for an hour or so. So anyway, I'm gonna try and make the best mashed potatoes, which means first of all, I need to make the best baked potatoes. Okay, lamb shank from Borough Market in a red wine sauce with the internet's best ever mashed potato recipe. And peas. It smells phenomenal in here. Let's try the lamb. It's just falling apart. That's incredible. All the flavours from the ingredients in that sauce. Delicious. Now for the internet's best ever mash. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. I can see what this, I can see what Mark up here, what I'm saying about when you boil them, 
you get a lot of moisture in there, but because they're baked, not boiled, it has a, it does have a firmer texture, a little bit grainy. I think maybe I prefer them boiled. The peas. But yeah, mashed potato is mashed potato. It tastes amazing. The lamb's delicious. Let's try some of the good ordinary claret. Goes very well with that. Right, I'm gonna tuck into this. The recipe in this book, snowflakes and snaps, came in very handy. Wouldn't change anything about it actually. Um, I'm glad I added the red wine instead of the uh, the recommended alcohol in here. But yeah, definitely recommend on a cold winter's evening like it is here in London now. Lamb shanks, mashed potato and peas. Cheers guys, I'll see you next time. Toodles. Right, the more good morning. A good ordinary claret. It's probably about a third of a bottle in there now. It, now normally I don't put a lot of thought into mashed potatoes. Chop up some potato, throw in a pan of boiling water, and then smash it within an inch of its life. I'm using a recipe from this book here: snowflake and schnapps, which in a nutshell. Nothing right now. It's winter. It's pitch black outside. Freezing cold. I'm using a recipe for lamb shanks from this chapter here, Warm to the Core, which says whether the Cumbrian War were about to brave the elements or hibernating in an oversized armchair, hiding from the freeze, you'll take comfort from these breakfasts and enjoy the sustenance of these simmering, slow cooked recipes by taking a nourishing meal designed to soften the blow 